Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria Montefusco and I'm a lover of all things when it comes to makeup, fragrance, and beauty. And today is a little bit of a mixed bag of a video. I'm going to be providing my first impressions of a perfume brand that I've personally never tried before. And this is Juliana's Perfumes. And I'm also going to be giving you all my first impressions on two fragrance samples that I got with a recent fragrance purchase of mine. So if you all are curious about my thoughts on Juliana's perfumes as well as my thoughts on Penhaligon's Changing Constance and BDK Velvet Tonka, then please keep on watching. All right, so I think we're going to start off with Juliana's perfumes. So let me show you the package I received today. So if you order a perfume from Juliana's perfumes, um, normally it comes in this really luxurious black box that opens up like this. So I believe currently, I checked their website, they're not able to ship out these black boxes right now. I think they ran out. So instead of receiving two samples with your perfume order, you'll receive three samples instead for an apology for not being able to get the box. So I thought that was nice. Of course, the box is a nice addition, but is it necessary? No. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Juliana's perfumes, at least what I know. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you may be saying, Victoria, aren't they a dupe brand? Isn't that something that you don't really do and the answer is yes and yes so Juliana's perfumes they make fragrances that are inspired by niche or designer fragrances that are like pretty expensive um, you know really like luxury um, you know high price point and they try to make them more accessible so personally I don't normally buy dupe fragrances because you know I have the funds normally to afford the real thing um, and so I'd rather support the original perfumer support the brand um, I know perfumes and like fragrances don't really have intellectual property protections but as a consumer my conscience I feel like that's the right thing to do the one exception I will make is if the original fragrance is discontinued if it's no longer being manufactured it is fair game in my opinion because of the original uh, brand that came out with the perfume says we're not going to make it anymore then I believe you can buy a dupe if you cannot find the original but then again this is just my opinion if you all buy dupe fragrances you know you do you if you're fine with it I'm fine with it so basically the perfume I ordered from Juliana's perfumes is a discontinued I think perfume at least right now it is impossible to find so I thought it was fair game but of course with this box I did receive two samples of fragrances that do currently exist I believe so I'm going to be testing those out as well um, but just keep in mind I don't have the originals and if I were to purchase a full bottle it would not be this version it would be the original version okay enough of the rant uh, let's get into testing so the first fragrance I'm going to test is Red Carpet Affair from Juliana's Perfumes. This fragrance is a inspired by fragrance from Guerlain's Angelique Noir. So I believe this is still being manufactured, but I think the packaging has changed recently. So in case you are wondering, the top notes on this fragrance are Angelica and Pear, the mid notes are Lavender, Rose, and Musk, and the base notes are Vanilla and Jasmine. Angelique Noir, on the other hand, has a few differences. The top notes, like Red Carpet Affair, are Angelica and Pear, but Angelique Noir has an added top note of Pink Pepper. The mid notes are Jasmine and Caraway, which are completely different from the mid notes of this fragrance which are lavender rose and musk and the base notes of Angelique Noir are Angelica vanilla and cedar which are completely different than the vanilla and jasmine base notes of this so again it's a bit different it's inspired by it but I feel like if I like this I may enjoy the original and if I don't like this I know to stay away from the original so let's try out this fragrance I've never smelled anything with Angelica in it before. So like this is a completely new note to me. I know it's a very green smelling note um, from, from reviews I've heard of um, about Angelique Noir. It seems like people think it's a green vanilla. So that's what I'm expecting. And that's pretty much what I'm getting here. It's a green floral vanilla. To be honest, this would give me a headache. <laughs> it's those, it's the, it's the lavender, it's the rose, 
those kinds of notes just really make my head pound. Yeah, this is not for me. I could see it working well on somebody else. I just know what does not work with me um, and what gives me headaches. I get headaches pretty easily from fragrances. So this would be a headache inducing fragrance just because of that rose and that lavender. But I don't hate it. Um, you definitely get the florals, you get a green vanilla, you get a tiny little bit of fruit in there. It's good, it's just not my vibe. So Angelique Noir's, uh, well, I guess Red Carpet Affair, which is inspired by Angelique Noir, is not for me. And by the way, I wanted to mention, um, these little samples come in glass bottles, they're really nice. And also, all of Juliana's perfumes are ex straight day parfums, which means that they have higher concentration of perfume oil um, versus a eau de parfum, which has a higher concentration of perfume oil versus an eau de toilette. So basically, ex straight day parfums uh, seem to last longer than eau de perfumes, which last longer than eau de toilettes. So just keep that in mind. So next up, I'm gonna try Inner Beauty. This is inspired by Delina, which I have tried. So Delina from Parfums de Marley. So some notes, we have top notes of rhubarb, bergamot, lychee, nutmeg, mid notes of vanilla, rose, suede, peony, base notes, cedar, frankincense, vetiver, cashmere. So versus Delina, which I have smelled before, the top notes are the same um, versus Inner Beauty. The mid notes are vanilla, rose, and musk, uh, and also patalia and vanilla. Oh wait, I already had vanilla in there. Why did I have vanilla twice? That's weird. Um, <laughs> so vanilla rose, that's in there, but the musk and patali in Delina differs from the suede and peony in Inner Beauty. And the base of Delina is cashmere and cedar vetiver incense. So, you know, those cashmere and vetiver notes are the same and also the cedar. But instead of frankincense, which we have in this one, Delina has incense. So it's a little bit different, I think. Um, personally, the original Delina, just not for me. Um, when it was time to request samples, they didn't have too much that I was interested in. Um, I really wanted to try their um, inspired by fragrance of Oud Orange Intense from, um, what what house is that from? I think it's Fragrance Dubois, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they just didn't have a sample of that available, so I went for this. So I was like, yeah, I've tried the original. So I might be able to compare it, even though I don't have the original sample in my collection still. So let's give it a try. Yeah, this is pretty much Delina, which I don't really like. <laughs> Delina to me is very rosy, very sweet rosy. And I just don't like rose. <laughs> so again, I didn't really want to try this one, but I was like, eh, maybe it's different from Delina. To me, if I had Delina side by side, I could compare them, but I don't. To me, this is Delina. It's basically Delina. I don't like Delina, so easy pass for me. So now I want to talk about the fragrance that I'm excited about, the one that I actually ordered, and this is Call Me By Your Name from Juliana's Perfume. So this is the bottle. I am not going to be spraying this. I am actually going to be spraying this little sample because I really love this. Basically, if you spray this sample and you don't like it, you get to return the full bottle no questions asked. I think that's amazing because personally, I have never smelled Guerlain Cormand Co Coquine, which is the fragrance that this is inspired by. Never had the chance to smell it. I live, you know, in a small mid-sized city in Tennessee. So like we don't really have Guerlain counters near where I live. Um, so I've never gotten the chance to smell it. I've heard from Gabby's perfumes that it's basically almost identical. Um, and Gourmand Coquine cannot be anywhere to be found because it seems like it's been discontinued, but Guerlain hasn't like really expressed like what's going on with it. So basically I'm gonna spray this baby, but this is what the bottle looks like. It's nice, thick, like acrylic. It feels nice. Um, it feels heavy. How much fragrance is in here? It doesn't say. I'm, I'm assuming this is probably like a 50 mil, but it's a nice bottle, stock bottle, but, but nice, very hefty and weighty. So let's talk about notes, of course. So call me by your name. Um, it's a very gourmand sounding fragrance, which I'm really excited about. So top notes of chocolate, pink pepper, mid notes, vanilla, amber, jasmine, base notes, labdanum, benzoin, brown sugar, and musk versus Gourmand Coquine, which has completely different notes. So Gourmand Coquine, according to Fragrantica, has notes of dark chocolate, cacao, rum, vanilla, spices, rose, and pepper. So basically the pepper's the same, chocolate, cacao, that's the same, vanilla's the same, 
don't see any rose in here. Don't really see any alcohol in here or like spices other than pepper. So it sounds a little bit different, but I'm curious. Let's see if I like it and if I'm gonna keep the bottle. Mmm. This smells good. Basically, <laughs> I've been wanting to try this fragrance because, you know, Gabby's perfume says, oh, this smells basically exactly like Gourmand Coquine. And it seems like everybody thinks Gourmand Coquine is like the ultimate chocolate gourmand perfume. And you all know, if you've been here for a bit, that I'm on the search for the perfect chocolate fragrance. I think it'd be perfect for the fall and the winter time. And this might be it. Wow, this is really nice. I definitely smell chocolate and vanilla. It's very sweet, definitely smells some sugar, but there's something interesting to it. There's something a little bit spicy, something a little bit deep and dark that's not just from the chocolate. It kind of, to me, this kind of smells like a boozy, sugary chocolate dessert with a little bit of something extra on there. This smells really good. Of course, I'm gonna to need to try the sample on my skin just to make sure it goes with my skin chemistry before I decide to officially crack open this baby. But so far, I'm not mad at this. And this fragrance was a really good price. It does. It is not available right now, the original. So if you've been wanting Gourmand Coquine, this might be your best bet because it seems like it's discontinued. Mm, and it's just really pleasant. And it seems like the lasting power on these is gonna be great because they're extracted parfums. It's a no risk purchase. They shipped really quickly, even though it was a pre-order. I'm impressed. I'm gonna try this on my skin, but I like it. This is a little bit different than what I have in my collection, but I'm not mad at it. Hopefully it doesn't give me a headache and then it'll be a keeper. So now switching gears a bit, I know it's kind of a random video, but you know what, that's okay. We're gonna talk about the two samples that I received from Lucky Scent when I purchased a fragrance recently. So the fragrance I purchased was Serendipitous from Serendipity 3. I recently did a whole Lucky Scent sample haul, um, and I forget which video that is, but you can just look on my channel, you can find the video, and I fell in love with that fragrance. It is a great chocolate, vanilla, orange, ice creamy, kind of fragrance. It's gorgeous. I love it. The lasting power isn't the best, but it's just a great like everyday gourmand scent. I could see it being used for all seasons. But anyways, I received two free samples when I bought that fragrance. And the first one I want to talk about is Penhaligon's Changing Constants. So this one's been super hyped up. Erin Nicole here on YouTube, she loves this fragrance. I've heard a lot of great things about this fragrance. So the top notes are cardamom, pimento, mid notes of caramel and salt, base notes, vanilla, cashmere, and tobacco. I have tried Minwi at Demi, which is Demi Rawlings collaboration with Fragrance Dubois, which apparently smells very similar to this. Personally, I was not a huge fan. I like the sweetness, but I felt it was a little bit too deep and too spicy for my liking. I hope this one's a bit sweeter, a bit just more like, I don't know, user-friendly, <laughs> um, a bit more crowd-pleasing. Maybe that's the words I'm looking for. So we'll see what I think, but Minmia Demi was not for me, but I like the idea of this like spicy, boozy, sweet, um, you know, vanilla kind, caramel, salty kind of scent. And that's what I was hoping Minmia Demi would be, but it wasn't. So I'm hoping this one is gonna be what I'm looking for. It smells nice, but it's not what I was expecting. I was expecting something sweeter. To be honest, Minui at Demi, when you first put that on the card, it smacks you in the face. This is not smacking me in the face. This is a lot more subtle, which is good. I thought Minui at Demi was just like, whoa, way too much all at once. Yeah, you definitely smell, smell something spicy. You smell something salty. The sweetness isn't really coming through all that much, but maybe it will on the skin or during the dry down. I'm not sure. I don't hate it, that's for certain. When I first smelled Minwia Demi, I was like, oh my God, this is way too much for me. And I like knew it just was not the fragrance for me, but this is not giving me that. This I'm a bit uncertain about, but I'm open to trying it on my skin. So that's promising. Yeah, this is, this is pleasant. I'll need to try it on my skin to see how it reacts to my skin chemistry, if I like it on me, if I think it's a good fragrance for me. If it is, great. If not, then oh well. <laughs> 
But you know, I don't hate it. I don't know how I feel about it, but I will gather some thoughts and either in my September rankings or my October rankings, I will let you know what I ended up deciding about this fragrance. So we have one more fragrance left, and this is from BDK Parfums, and this is Velvet Tonka. So this fragrance has gotten a lot of mixed reviews. <laughs> I'm curious to see what I'm going to think here. So we have top notes of almond and orange blossom, mid notes of tobacco and rose, base of tonka bean, amberwood, bourbon, vanilla, amorous, the almond, the bourbon, vanilla, the tonka, that sounds pleasant. Tobacco and rose, those mid notes, a little bit scary. Not really a fan of rose. Tobacco, eh, not really a fan of that either. But we'll see what I think. Um, I know this has been a controversial one. People either seem to love it or hate it. We'll see which camp I fall into. This is very powdery almond. That is exactly what I get on the top. To me, this smells like almond paste. It smells like cookies that my mom would make, um, like these little thumbprint cookies that my mom would make during the holidays. And she'd always need to buy almond paste for them. It smells exactly like almond paste, <laughs> which I like that smell. It, it's, a, it's a nostalgic smell for me. It brings me back. I enjoy it. Because it reminds me of baking with my mom. Hmm. I don't smell any rose. I do not smell any tobacco. I would say the almond, the vanilla, and the tonka are basically what I'm getting here. I'm just getting very sweet, very gourmand, very almond pasty. And I like that smell. Am I gonna wanna smell like almond paste? I don't know. Um, but I think this is something I'm gonna have to test out to see again how it reacts with my skin chemistry, the lasting power, you know, the sillage, all of that fun perfume terminology that we love talking about. This is pleasant. If you hate almond scented stuff, you're gonna hate this, so don't even try it. But if you like the smell of almond paste, I feel like this could be for you. As it dries down, the almond is becoming a lot less intense and it's just becoming more just like generally vanilla tonka-y sweet. But you still get the almond too. That's very pleasant. I feel like that would work really nicely for the fall and the winter. Just, and maybe that's just me, but to me, almond paste again reminds me of like the holidays and making Christmas cookies, those thumbprint cookies and all of that. So I could see this working really well around this time of the year. So again, as another one, I'm gonna have to try on my skin. So that is it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Basically, what we learned here today is that the three fragrances I actually really wanted to try, um, I actually liked on the paper. So of course, my opinions could change between now and when I try them on my skin and get more developed thoughts on them. But so far, um, three for three on the ones I really wanted to try. And the two fragrance samples from Juliana's Perfumes that I wasn't too excited about um, were really not my thing. The, the, the Delina dupe, really not my thing, but I was expecting that. And then the Angelique Noir dupe is pleasant. It's just really not for me. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please like this video. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And it also helps me know what kinds of videos you wanna see on my channel. If you like me, please subscribe. I'd love to have you all here. And if you have anything to comment down below, any questions, comments, fragrance recommendations, types of videos you wanna see on my channel, please let me know. More than happy to to chat with you all. And so with that, thank you for spending a little part of your day with me and I will see you all next time. Bye.